Hello everyone and welcome to Live with Janome. I'm Miriam Coffey and welcome to my studio. I'm an education specialist here at Janome America and I'm very excited for today's video because it's been a while since I've done a video and I also really like this project and I think you guys are going to too, at least I hope so. So what we're going to be doing today is a in the hoop project which is done with our embroidery machine. So we're not going to be sewing today. So if you pulled out your sewing machine, you can go ahead and put that away and pull out your embroidery machine. Or if you have a combo, then you're already done and you're ready. So I'm going to be sewing with the, or embroidering with the 550E, but if you have a different embroidery machine, not a problem. This is a small enough project that for the most part, any embroidery machine will be able to use it. So Let's go ahead and get started. Today's project is going to be the Conversation Heart zipper pouch. So it is sort of modeled after the Conversation Hearts that we get on Valentine's Day, since Valentine's Day is right around the corner. I thought this would be a fun little project to get us all in the Valentine spirit. And this is a really quick and easy project because it's done on the hoop. You can make as many as you want for all your loved ones and your friends and your family if you want. So we've got three different um, phrases for the conversation hearts. We have hug me, um, be mine, and kiss me. <laughs> and plus, if you don't want to do the conversation part, if you don't want to put the additional phrase on the front, you can also just do regular fabric like this one. And we have our zipper in the back and I even added a little tab. So if you wanted to add it to a book bag or keychain, whatever you wanted, you um, can also add that too. And that's just one of those fun things that with any project, you always can put your own little personal touch into it, even with embroidery, which kind of seems like, you know, it's it has to follow by a certain rules. But even with something like that, you can still make it really different from this one to this one. I mean, there's still hearts, but you know, as you can see, you still can put your own personal touch on it. So before we go ahead and get started on the embroidery part, let's go ahead and go over some supplies. So the first thing we're gonna need is our embroidery machine, which I've got right here. Again, we're using the 550E. Secondly, we're going to need an embroidery hoop. For this particular project, I think the um, SQ20B works best for this machine, and that would be for the 550E or the 500, and then if you have a different machine, you're probably going to need to use a different hoop. Secondly, you're going to need two pieces of tearaway stabilizer, which I've got my stabilizer right here, and we're using two pieces because this is a two-part project. You have to hoop the phrase or the saying first, and then take that out of your machine, and then we're going to go ahead and start embroidering the back part and that as well as the construction part of it. So we've got a two pieces of stabilizer, our hoop. We're also going to need to need some fabric and we need four pieces of fabric that are seven by seven. So we've got a seven inch square and we're going to have our lining fabric, the outside of our fabric, and then the two sides on the back of our zipper. Next, we're going to need some embroidery thread. We're gonna need two different colors. The first color is going to be the phrase um, color. So you're saying, so the be mine, I have in red, and then the construction thread color. And you want the construction to match the fabric that you're using. And since this is pink, I have some pink embroidery thread and I would embroider it with that. When we go to the machine, I actually have a black on the machine but that's just so that you guys can see it a little bit closer since the video is a little bit harder to see than in person. So we're using black there, but when you actually work on your real project, don't forget to match your thread color with your um, fabric. You don't have to worry about matching your bobbin if you don't want to, but mostly just your top thread. Secondly, we're going to need some either masking tape, painter's tape, or embroidery tape works fine. Um, really whatever you have works great. We're also gonna need a zipper. Um, now, zippers on this particular one, I think around a nine inch zipper works great. Um, this is a cut um, zipper by the yard, so I cut it to the length that I wanted, but if you have um, pre-made zippers, that works great too, but 
Remember within the hoop projects, a bigger zipper is always better than a smaller zipper. So when in case, go a little bit bigger. And then now we have a few scissors that we're gonna need. So we're gonna need some just junky paper scissors to work with first. And that's only to cut the zipper um, the zipper itself on the tabs. Um, I don't like to use my nice zip, um, my nice fabric scissors to cut my zippers. I like to keep them sh as sharp as possible for as long as possible. And that's why the junky scissors are good for that. And then we're gonna need a small pair of sharp scissors and that's just for one little cut in the center. And then Lastly, but not least, um, we have some pinking shears. Now, technically you don't have to use pinking shears for this. You could use regular scissors to cut out your heart, but I find the pinking shears kind of a three-in-one um, tool for this particular project. Um, first of all, you can cut, it cuts out the, you're gonna cut out your shape with it. Secondly, it actually creates a little zigzag shape on it. And when you turn it right side out, it's going to, one, keep your thread from unraveling or your fabric unraveling. And then lastly, it also creates those little um, indentations, the little zigzags, the nicks. Um, instead of having to make a little, lots of little cuts around the curve, because as we all know, if we're trying to use a curve um, and we're sewing a curve and we need to turn it right side out, um, or if we're doing facing on a neckline or a sleeve, um, and when you try to turn it, and if you haven't cut those little notches, it's not going to lay flat and it's not going to look nice. But by cutting a scant quarter inch with pinking shears, that does, it's kind of kills two birds with one stone. It is going to make those little notches so you don't have to worry about making um, the little cuts in it. And it's going to keep your fabric fun unraveling. So it really is a useful tool if you don't have a pair of pinking shears, I recommend getting them. Um, and for this project, they're a good thing to have. And then lastly, kind of an optional thing, but um, a fabric spray adhesive. Um, and that is, it's just a temporary spray adhesive and that's just to spray the fabric in place. You could also um, baste it with your machine, but if you don't wanna to have to pull out the basting stitches, the um, spray also works great. So let's go ahead and clear this off a little bit more and we're going to hoop our stabilizer and then we're gonna get embroidering. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to start with the phrase. So we're gonna need to start with the be mine. And first I need to just unhoop um, or hoop my stabilizer. I've loosened the screw a little bit and then pressed evenly on all four sides. Make sure it's not being over hooped. Looks good. Now I'm going to tighten it back up with my screw. That looks nice. Now what I'm actually going to do with the magic of step outs, I'm going to just have the new one, the um, one that's ready already done just so that we don't all have to wait seven minutes for this to stitch out because I know it's a little boring. So what we would do is we would take the front of our fabric. So this would be the front of my fabric. I would just use a little bit of spray adhesive, sprayed a little bit on the back of it, and then I would center this in my hoop. Now the fabric is big enough, the measurements that I've done is generous enough that you don't have to be super concerned that it's not 100% perfect. But if you do want to make sure that it's 100% perfect, you can always fold your fabric um, to get your center mark by folding it um, sides to sides and then the finger pressing and get that little hash mark in the center or you could mark it. But because your fabric's big enough, it's not necessary. So now I would just go ahead and put this in my embroidery machine, have this design up and then stitch it out. But since we don't wanna waste seven minutes doing that, I'm gonna pretend that I just did this and we're all amazed how fast that was. So now we're gonna go ahead and de-hoop this because we're going to work on the back of it. So 
what I'm going to do is to save the stabilizer, I'm just going to go ahead and peel this off because we don't actually really need that because we've already stitched it out. So now what we're going to do is go to the front of our machine. I'm going to just wake her up. And I have my design already pulled up. It has eight different step outs. So there are actually eight colors, but each color is a step that we're going to do. Um, so first of all, I've got my tear away stabilizer and I'm going to lift my foot up and insert my hoop into my machine. And then I'm gonna lower my foot and I'm ready. I'm gonna just go ahead and press start. And that is going to, oops, looks like the thread came undone. We're just going to re-thread her for a second. I hope everyone is having a great day and is really excited to try out this project. And don't forget to always let us know where you guys are coming from or where you guys are watching this video from because we do love to hear where you guys are watching from. So we're gonna, just gonna start over. We're gonna pretend that didn't happen. We're gonna go back and it's gonna stitch out our placement stitch. Now within the hoop projects, they are, you build them backwards. So it's kind of like you're um, building everything um, in a way backwards um, so that you're not necessarily, um, it may not make a whole lot of sense right now, um, but it will start taking form and it will start making a lot more sense in a second. So this is our first step. It's our placement stitch. So we already have done that. Wonderful. For this, I do like to take it out of my machine or just pull it towards me because I find it to be a little bit easier to have my um, hoop closer to me. And this is when the masking tape or your embroidery tape comes in handy. I have just a couple pieces that I have um, pulled out for me. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape the zipper in place um, so that it doesn't move and I don't have to worry about it um, slipping around. What I like to do is I like to start with the back of my zipper tape taped first and then I kind of roll it down because if you've noticed on the placement, there's three lines. So the outside is where the zipper tape is and the center is where the teeth of the zipper would be. So you wanna line up that zipper teeth with, I'm gonna pull this a little forward, I'm gonna line that up so that it, the center stitch is lined up with the zipper pull and the zipper teeth. Now I'm going to tape that down and slide this back, lower my foot, and it looks like that might have slipped a little bit. So I'm going to double check that placement just to make sure that it doesn't wobble. All right. Now it is going to stitch this down. So it's going to do stitch or color two is our um, tack down stitch. So it's going to sew down the zipper in place so that we don't have to worry about it moving around a bunch. All right, now that we have that done, we're going to lift our foot up and we're going to place the side of our fabric to the, um, the side of the fabric on the zipper like this. And we'll do this, but I wanna show it to you up close a little bit just so you can see. So I've made a little mark down the center and I've folded this in half um, because we wanna stitch in the center point so that when we flip it over, we have the pretty side here, which would be the lining, and then this would be our outside. I'm gonna do that to both sides, but before we do that, let me grab my lining pieces. So this is one side of my lining, and I do have 
a fold crease here, but I also have that Sharpie mark so that you'll be able to see where I'm placing it. So you can just sort of slide it underneath. Now I want my foot and my needle to line up where that mark is. And I wanna make sure that the back part is also lined up properly. It needs to be on the right side of the zipper or teeth. Um, and don't it doesn't have to be 100% perfect because it's going to be, um, there's enough fabric that if it's a little off, it's not the end of the world. Now it's going to, we're gonna do the other side. So I'm gonna lift my foot up. And now I'm going to just sort of finger press this on the outside, use another piece of masking tape or embroidery tape. I'm gonna lay that flat. You can use your nail to finger press that if you'd like. Tape it on the outside. We're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna move this piece of tape out of the way. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Again, we're placing our fabric, the full line, on this time on the left side of the zipper pull and teeth. And then we wanna make sure that, we're gonna lower our foot, that our needle and our foot is going to be close to that fold line. Again, if it's a little off, not the end of the world. And then when it's done, it's gonna look like that. So you're gonna have the fold on either side. And as you can see, it's kind of starting to come together. It's kind of starting to take shape. And then what we're gonna do is lift our foot up again. Finger press this up back, tape it down, I'm gonna tape that down. Now we're going to lower our foot and press start. And that is going to do a top stitch all the way around either side of the zipper, tacking it down and keeping it nice and secure. And again, we have our lining and the outside of the zipper so we don't have to worry about any fabric fraying or anything. Now we're gonna lift our foot up and I'm gonna pull my zipper towards the center. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to do a placement stitch. So it's gonna stitch out this heart. So I'm gonna go ahead and press start. Put there no lower foot and then press start. Let's go ahead and pull that back here. I'm going to cut my threads. And isn't that what it always says that, you know, you never make these sort of mistakes when you're doing it by yourself. <laughs> but as soon as the camera starts rolling, you start messing up, but not the end of the world. We're going to actually just, um, we're going to stitch that out again and I'm just going to keep that a little flat there we go now we're over the hump not a big deal totally fixable and that is our placement now if we were working with a um fabric, like if we were doing one that did not have a saying on it or anything that you wanted centered, you wouldn't need to stitch this out. But because we have a saying that we want centered, we need to make sure that that part, that placement, um, it allows us to then place our phrase perfectly centered in the project. So the next step is going to be tacking down our front of our um, project. So let's grab the front here. 
So first, what we would do is, um, I'm going to pull this out. And just so that I can place this down a little bit better. And this is when we would want to tear away the stabilizer from the first part. And we'll do that quickly. Doesn't have to be perfect, not the end of the world. That's good enough. Now to place this to make sure that it is centered on this particular, because the B is center, I wanna make sure that the B is right at the, in between the indent of the, or the center point of the heart. So that's centered. Now I want to pull this back a little bit and make sure that the and the sides of, looks like it's twisted a little bit. That way the sides of the mine are pretty equal. And this is just, I'm kind of eyeballing it. It's not crucial. And again, if you are not doing the phrase, if you just wanted to use the hoop, um, just make it without the, without having the phrase on it, you wouldn't necessarily need that. You wouldn't need that extra step and you wouldn't obviously have to worry about it placement being 100% perfect. All right, so now that's our placement. Now the last step, which is step number eight, is the double stitch. And that is going to secure the lining fabric. So we're gonna place another piece of fabric on top, another, that will be the fourth, of our seven by seven pieces of fabric, place that on top, and then we're gonna hit our double stitch, um, and then it's gonna double stitch it, and it's going to secure it all, and then we're going to start taking it apart. So now let's grab our lining fabric, which seems to have, here it is. I'm going to just slide that underneath, and because it's not, um, there's no particular pattern that I need um, done. It's just going to, and it's big enough, it's not going to um, move around and I don't have to worry about it moving around a whole lot. We're going to let that stitch and I'm going to start showing you how to take this apart. So now we have, we're going to, we're, now our um, last step is done. And I'm going to go ahead and just stop this just so that we don't have that extra noise. Um, and I'm going to take off all this tape. We're gonna get rid of that. And this will be once it's done sewing. I'm gonna get rid of all this extra stuff. We're gonna remove all this tear away stabilizer. So I'm just going to pull this apart and tear that away. And anytime you're using tear away, try to support those stitches when you can. And a little bit more to remove. I'm going to use my sharp scissors here to just kind of open that up and access the center point. And it just opened up the center. A little bit more tear away to do. And let's get this last bit of stabilizer on the side off. All right. Now we're done with all of the tearing away of the stabilizer. Now this is when we're going to use our junky scissors Actually get closer to it because these are pretty junky scissors that they don't cut fabric very well so I'm gonna get close to this and trim off the zipper tape same thing on the other side I'm peeling back the top part just so I have access to it I'm not cutting through all the layers just yet and again this is just because my junky scissors are pretty junky 
and they don't um, cut through normal fabric that well anymore. All right, so we've got the lining and then our zipper. And now what we're gonna do, you can see that kind of just pulled itself open. Now we're going to trim. I wanna do like a scant quarter inch around the whole project. And if it's a little wonky, not the end of the world. And then same thing on this side, trim all the way around, get rid of that. We're gonna use our little small sharp scissors just to get this center point right there. You wanna get a couple threads away and then I'm also gonna get rid of this little bulk there just so that when it turns, there's not gonna be any of that extra um, and now, because we have the pinked edge, we don't have to worry about doing all those little nicks like I just did all the way around because that would take a lot longer. Now all we have to do is trim the rest all the way around the heart. Again, if you scant quarter inches, it's 100% perfect. I won't tell as long as you won't tell that mine isn't. All right, that looks pretty good. So now we have it trimmed up. We have the little nick in the center so that this turns nice and easy. Now we're just gonna turn it right side out. And now we just have to, now this is when we would take it to our ironing board and we would press it all out because everything looks better once we've pressed it all out. Everything looks better. So this is when it's got a cute little heart again. It's gonna look a whole lot better. As you can tell, a good pressing makes the world of a difference. <laughs> it's crazy how that happens. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this project with me because I've really enjoyed showing it to you. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and see you at the next live. All right, bye everyone.